want us to look at a verse of scripture that is taken from Judges. Judges, yes. It flips right into my hand. Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. Turn in your Bibles, if you have them on your instrument, your gadgets, and I want to read this verse from this portion of the Word of God. If you have found it, say, Amen. I'm still waiting for some persons. <laughs> The amen doesn't sound too convincing as if we are all there, but I know we are getting to that point and how necessary and important. Okay, I'm at Judges chapter 2, and it's verse 10, short verse. It reads, when all that generation that had been gathered together unto their fathers, meaning they died, they expired. Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the works which he had done for Israel. I have just read Judges chapter 2, and I read specifically verse 10 that describes a scenery in Scripture of two major generations. Beloved, it describes a generation that existed initially, that knew God, knew of his ways, knew of his signs, his miracles, his acts, knew God. The Bible speaks in the book of Psalm. Blessed is the generation that forget not the Lord. Or the generation whose God is the Lord. You better believe there are some generations that are cursed and some generations that are blessed. That some generations that spend time acquainting themselves with God and the ways of God. And they come out, those that know God, blessed and prosperous. It starts out in the book of Genesis. The generation that knew God, that God created, that God blessed, and because he blessed them, they had his genes. They had his genes. They had his genealogy. They had his bloodline. Begotten of God. Known by God as they knew God. But by the reason of time, Men in their generations forget God. And because man was made to worship something, they sometimes even worship a tree, a stone, a river, some creative fixtures of their own imagination. And man's 
job today is to seek to replace God. Once God made man in his own image and likeness, in his own genes, in his own makeup structure. But man today, prophet, is trying to replace God. We want prayer out of schools. We want prayer out of our homes. We want prayer even out of the church. <laughs> we want to replace God in the raising of our children. In the schooling of our children. We want to replace the knowledge of God with the philosophy of man. And that's a big mistake that society is making. Genesis 11 said they called a meeting together one day, man. And they gather in the valley of Shinar. And they said, let us, let us, let us do two things. Build a city to preserve our posterity. And build a temple that reaches to the heavens. It is in man to worship. Something, someone, somewhere, somehow. Man can't help himself. But by reason of time, the devil gets us to put the focus on ourselves and to take it off God. Why would man want to build a, a city for posterity, for self-preservation? The same passage says a name for himself. To replace God with what? With who? And then man wanted to build a temple. Doesn't it strike you? The next thing man wanted was worship. Self-worship. Self-preservation. And they want to reach God. But it is not in man's ability to reach God unless God comes down. We can't approach God. We can't reference God. We have no reference of God except that which he gives of himself. And even the rearing of our children today, you know what we are saying? Don't force them. Make them wear what they want to wear. Make them dress how they want to dress. Let them put on what they want to put on. And now I have found out it is the children that are instructing the parents what to wear. Mommy, this would look good on you. So there is a reversal in human history. But God has always made the generation. It's more significant than we think that they would retain God in their knowledge. When Joseph, who knew God, brought the knowledge of God to Egypt, and the Pharaoh that knew of Joseph died, the knowledge of what Pharaoh did through his God. The signs, the wonders, the miracle also was absented. What's wrong with this generation? This is a generation that knew not God. Not the fear of God, the love of God, the reverence of God. And so judges said there was two generations like that. One that knew of the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the awesomeness, and the fear of God was upon them. A governable generation. A generation that looked up to God and sought to 
bring God in their midst. Reverence God, honored God. But then there was a second generation. Pastor Riley that knew not God. The ways of God, the wonders of God, the miracles of God, the signs of God. Intellect can't reveal God. Academics can't reveal God. Hmm? Science alone is not sufficient. They scoff. They're too noisy. They're speaking too much tongues. They're too confusing. They ridicule those who would reserve a place in our hearts for God. Yet all that we have attained to, all that we have gathered, material or otherwise, it's from our brother said it. He may be standing in the departure launch of life. But he can give an account of his stewardship. Of what the Bible says. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. And blessed is that generation who preserves God in their thought. What's wrong with the nation? I preached on Wednesday. The Prime Minister came up and he says, Preacher, thank you for the word. We can't build a nation without God. They invited God in Genesis 11, not to their meeting, but they were making big plans to build a temple that reached up to the heavens and to build a city to preserve them just two chapters after the fall. And beloved, you know what happened? Because they did not retain God in their knowledge. That was the birthplace for Babylon. Babel, confusion. There was a time when the earth spoke one language, had one culture, one identity, one vision, one mission, one passion. How did we come to this? Rebellion, disobedient. God came down and he says, anything this people purpose in their hearts to do, good or bad, if we don't come down, look what modern man is doing, examine it, and put my judgment and my warning upon it, it will come to pass. Even negative. So man can have unity, dignity. Man can have culture, learning, all forms of linguistics, all forms of intelligence, all forms of academics. But if we dare leave God, that's why there are goat nations and there are sheep nations. And we are praying to God to preserve the Jamaica nation. But praying alone is not enough. There are altars to be torn down. Altars in our lives, my lives, your lives. Altars that are erected in some cities, in some nations, in some gates. That unless through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Freemasonry altars. Lodge altars. Altars in our schools. Altars in our homes. Altars in our business centers. Nothing is left of this nation. So we are asked today, do not discount what just happened with this baby dedication. And this great, great grandfather, the greatest investment that he can give to the next generation is a button exchange so that the, the, the mile, the leg of the relay can be continued 
He could leave his children wealth and honor. But Dr. Ben, sooner or later, they will be gathering to fight over what's left. And you know what happened? Sooner or later, nothing will be left for them. Because all that God asks us, Solomon says, I say to you, when I research it all, it is vanity and vexation of spirit. The ultimate conclusion is to love God, serve God, and keep his commandment. For this is the entire duty of mine. You know, all of my children, five children, see Brother Stafford as a kind of grandfather. They revere him in their hearts, in their knowledge. You know what? They grew up seeing a godly image and father. And if anything was to happen and I were to be taken out of the equation, it would be Brother Stafford, with reverence, with humility. Many of us saw him as that, though we were not children. But what he postured and posted to us was in his own way, in his own humility, in his own simplicity. The children may do what they please afterwards. He's not responsible to the choices they made. He tried his endeavor best to model a God, a Jesus that they can relate to, that they can personalize, that they can honor. Your parents must live the best they can. But the choices you made, you take on the consequences. All of this, and I'm ending that we are seeing in our nation, the level of crime, violence. The Prime Minister came to the church and he says, hardware, we have spent so much billions on hardware. Software, we have given them all type of sophisticated technologies. But do you know, crime can never be solved by the constabulary, by the military, by sophistication, by all kinds of technology, because the Bible says the heart of man. That's where iniquity and sin and evil and wickedness and vices starts from. Basic little things like honor your mother and your father, that your days on this land may be prolonged you notice the young people are dying it is at a tender age it is the elderly that is living to a hundred a hundred and twenty one brother tell me i love to create duppies i love to see a man breathes his last breath and become a ghost right in this community until the gospel reaches heart and he changed his thoughts and philosophy of life. He's now living in England with a family of seven, four girls, three boys, and finished with drugs because he met Jesus. Brethren, this nation needs God. This generation needs Jesus. And as parents, we are responsible through life and example, through lip and living, to model Christ to them. If not, God help us. I spoke of a recent study I had to do. Brazil has overtaken Taiwan as the sex capital of the world. And that the last World Cup football left them with 11 million 
prostitutes, with all kinds of sexual perverted diseases. And then when they left South Africa, eight million people, men and women, were left in that nation with all types of sexual perverted diseases. They only told you how much money they made but that the youngest prostitute, male and female, in Brazil, of four years to six years old. And by the time they had become 11, they were experts in the job to feed their other siblings. And they came from the richest countries in the world that could afford those negative lifestyles. When God puts in the hand of a couple, a man and a woman, to continue the bloodline and give birth to a child, a boy or a girl, and say you are held accountable for your stewardship of this child, be ye well assured we will have to account of our stewardship of those children. So do all you want to do now. Laugh as you can, as you may, now. But every man will give an account of his stewardship, whether good or bad, of how he has conducted his life. I say to you, give your generation back to God. See to it that this generation do not take sin as the course. For one day be well assured that generation will brought to account. Whether it is Jude's generation, or Jude, or Judges, or James, or Joshua, Moses, Joseph, Put them on your knees as our brother did today and bless them. Speak life over them. Speak grace to them. Pronounce God over their lives. Let men laugh you to scorn. But we will have to give an account of our stewardship before God. Every baby dedication. We pray for the mother, the father. We cut off every generational curse, every bloodline curse, every corrupt seed in the generational line, every family curse, every demon infestation, and every door that was open to them. Because the generation of today fighting a battle with a different kind of demonic oppression. I closed my Bible. They told me that the river Euphrates have dried up. Revelation told me that in the river Euphrates used to be four angels bound for a time specified, designated by God to be released upon the face of the earth. There are some demons, Dr. Ben, that are released for this time upon this generation of children that respect no borders, that knows no order, no discipline, that knows no God and does not retain him in their hearts. But blessed is the nation we are pronouncing a blessing over parents and children and generation. And there's just a window of opportunity that is opened. That is opened on this generation. That if we leave without exchanging the baton of exchange and giving them something to hope for, and showing Jesus to them, we have eternally lost them. 
we have to battle hell. Preach hell. Preach heaven. Hell hot. Heaven real. Because no man has the right to hear the gospel twice when none has heard it just once. We have heard it and heard it and heard it and heard it. But your children that you know so well are only succeeding because of what you have taught them. Because of how you have taught them. And the Bible says this, train up the child in the way that he or she ought to grow. That even when they may temporarily forget it will always come back to them as a seed that was planted in their hearts. And that's the only thing saving some of our children today. The word, say the word, the word that was planted indelibly in their hearts that they know right from unrighteousness, blessings from curse. Stand with me now on your feet. I pray, God, that this opportunity gives all of us the privilege again to look at four generations that forget not the house of God or the name of God, say God, or the name of Jesus, say Jesus. The little child at the altar like he was conversing with his great-grandfather, accepting, receiving, acknowledging where he was brought to the altar, offered up to God, that God would take him and use him and build him and bless him, that as he grows up, he would never depart Hallelujah. From the house of God. From the word of God. From the knowledge of God. Because he holds a generation in his lineage. Over six million fertile sperm cells. Scientists said. Over six million to deposit righteousness in the earth. Through the earth. But think of it on the reverse. What if they do not acknowledge God? Demonic portals are open by them because they rebel and neglect God from their knowledge. As we pause to pray to go, Jesus, as the last Adam, came into the world and lest the hearts of the fathers be turned to the children and the hearts of the children to the father, I will come and smite the earth with a curse. May what we participated in today awaken us to the reality of the conditions in which we live. And as a separation is made between the godly and the ungodly, between the righteous and the unrighteous, between a family that serves God and retains Him in their knowledge, and a family that waves God off. Let us pray.